All right, let's keep this introduction short and sweet. Return to the last place we uh, had good action jigging up King Mackerel. And I brought more stuff to see if I can learn new tricks, but something totally different has had plans for me today. All right, so one of the keys with these crocodile spoons, let's say this is all solid hardware, solid rings, um, is to use a loop knot. So this way the spoon swings freely reduces line twists, you'll get just a lot better action for the most part with these spoons. Um, they're good spoons, sometimes they work really well, it depends on the forge. Other days other stuff works better, it's kind of like a mixed thing. Picked them up uh, on clearance around here for about $2.50 a year ago, so you know I bought about 50 of them. Alright, making a drift out in 70 feet to start, got a crocodile spoon, one and a half ounce. Fast drift. A little bit of not so great conditions to start, but it's laying down, so this day's gonna get better and better as we go. Uh, yeah, because I had two bites and no paddle tail. <laughs> situation of bad luck so uh, I dropped the heavy tackle missed the king mackerel so I immediately went to grab a metal spoon <laughs> got an amberjack for sure I'm gonna land them on the little 2500 as of now as of now I still got a chance we're lucky we're on like natural bottom if this was a wreck we're anything with high relief. This would have been over a long time ago. Come on up, pal. What you thinking? I got AJ for sure. He ate a crocodile spoon. Pretty, pretty bad, lousy irony here. First drop, I used a big paddle tail. Got cut off by a king mackerel, so I said, oh, let me try something flashy for a king. All right, the guy who built this rod was probably cringing watching that. So, uh, uh, what's that? I was snap it. <laughs> yeah, he's probably like, what is he doing fight using this rod to, to bring in amberjacks? All right, so I caught a greater amberjack. Eric right here just caught an Almaco Jack. It's a lot more stout of a fish. Kings again. Had like a little dig dig. All right, I went up to 60 gram metal jig. Kind of like a knife style jig. Got a lot of bites on the paddle tails from King Mackerel here, so. parts out of the way, I think. Ooh, it's a nice one. I got that here, I'm good. Ooh. Seems, to, seems to be that 28 to 30 inch class. 
a little different than a kayak, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. We good? <laughs> Got these assist hooks. They're a little easier to deal with than the trebles. Hopefully, hopefully that don't happen again. It's gonna happen again, isn't it? I think we're gonna perhaps mosey to a different edge of this ledge. We've got some uh, 40 feet off the surface. Oh, you do? Yeah. It's a school of something. In case you were wondering where the Spanish mackerel are. They're right here. <laughs> the mix. Okay. Wow, they, they really pick up a beautiful color out here in the ocean though. Have green, dark green. Okay. Well, we're gonna keep this guy. Just one at least. So I, I basically prepared for last week's trip for this this uh, for this trip. <laughs> you know, catch a fish, but brought real light tackle to try to jig up some more kings and uh, just see what else is around on the surface. And oh, today the amberjack. Oh, Fight really hard, man. Yeah, I think I see the Spanish now. They're 30 feet down. Yeah, it looked like a good school. Them. Yeah. Yeah, they look way different than kings. I mean, you would, you would, Skinnier? Yeah, they're little, little thin lines. Looks like kings under them. <laughs> He's like, looks like kings. Man, I really want to just hook some small fish. <laughs> Smaller fish, rather. So I don't want to go too much heavier. I don't want to blow up this rod that he just made for me. A week or two ago. Ah, oh, man. Really should have been here. Should have been here with this tackle and these lures last week. Just need to be 28. Just about 29 inches or so. So I haven't tried one in a long time. So I think I'm going to give this a go. Last time I ate one of these things, it was filled with worms and I'm pretty much wiped with even these like 10 pounders um because uh <laughs> brought last week's tackle out what I needed for last week so all right let's get him on ice so I kept an amberjack I will see how that tastes that Almaco Jack got me a little bit more sympathetic to the Jack cost because the Almaco Jack was pretty good. And the Yellow Jacks in the Florida Keys are also excellent. So, think those are fish moving through or is there a little bit of structure there? There was one little hump. Yeah, we're almost there. I think you got some AJs down there, honey. More AJs? I think you do. More AJs? I'm so excited to hear that. I could see why he talks an old timer. They really don't like amberjacks. Yeah, I mean, they kind of take over an area. This time. 
or the bottom 20% of the water column right now. I have like three bites on the drop there on. Is it bestie? I think it is my best friend, but it's not that big at least. It's coming up pretty easy right now. It's something different, I don't know. It's coming up pretty easy though. It's sizable. Oh, it could be my other bestie. We haven't seen him yet. You know what I'm talking about. Old gray tax man. Grouper. Well, I'll be. <laughs> that was awesome. I'd rather put a G on this spot. <laughs> Hit the minute we tap about him. Got him. Pretty gag, dude. Surprised to see him. Alright. Take good care of him. Okay. Doesn't look like he's throwing his stomach up or anything. Let me give him a good plunge. He ate this uh, little four inch split tail smasher. If we get another one of those guys, we'll probably move spots. The season's close, so I'd rather not torture them. We're looking for grunts and trigger fish. Those sorts of fish, honestly. Wrap it up. Or mackerel. So, anything that's not AJ, and hopefully not closed, closed species fish like red snapper. My man grunts. <laughs> Grunt Daddy's here to play. Oh, I got a red snapper. Dang it. It's a good spot. Is that a vermilion? Oh my goodness. That's a massive vermilion. Oh my gosh. I thought I had a red snapper. That right, that's a vermilion snapper. He's pretty good. We just got to really pack him well on ice. Catching like the other fish, apparently, on the plastics. Could have been a, what's it called? Vermilion. Could be, yeah. Coming up. What we got, what we got? He's red. Grunt. Nope, grunt. Got you all with tacos. Do you, uh, do you want to keep a grunt? Yeah, I'll keep a grunt. Okay. Maybe like two, three more. All right. But I, you gotta let me catch one. Hey, man. Yeah, well, sea bass love to just hold on to those jigs. Oh, that's a good fish. Could be a sea bass though. Maybe it's finally my my grunt time. Is that what you have? That seemed very grouper to me. Yeah, I don't think it's a good one. Could be. My time to shine on the grunt. Run holes. Yes, sir. Boy. Z yeah. wagon. Yeah. Not starving tonight. <laughs> All right, that's a grunt. Great eating fish. Thanks. White grunt. All right, so the original plan today was to go back to where we caught kings last week and, you know, rock different jigs and just maybe configure a couple things. I think I missed a few kings earlier where maybe they were Spanish mackerel. Um, we pushed back into like 18 miles now and uh, we're doing more bottom fishing. There doesn't seem to be the pelagic activity here, but there isn't any amberjack, so I'm pretty much wiped with them. So here we're catching more bottom fish. Um, it's mostly grunts, which is really, you know, not much else to keep out here this time of year. And a couple of vermilion snappers. And it's about 76 feet of water. Just throwing this jig, bouncing it back, and getting a couple good bites so far, so. Hate it when they short strike. It's the worst feeling ever. We got another sea bass. Something better here. Oh, a little, a little gag. Baby gag. 
Got me a G. Did you get you one? Yeah. The G I want. Uh -huh. Yeah. The good Gross. kind of G. Grossin. Yeah. I think so. Ah, nice sea bass, wow. Real nice one. Oh, nice. Bottom, bottom fishing plan B. Got a keeper sea bass right here. It's probably about 15, 16 inches. Also on that split tail smasher. Nice fat gut. Stuff that fish before you caught him. <laughs> Full lead. <laughs> it's funny to see the difference with the plastic and the um, metal catches too. How, how different they are. Yeah. I got them doing it way less action on the plastic. Yeah, but you catch quality when you do catch. Yeah, but you did get more grunts than me, also, at the same yeah. time. It's like a massive shark going on Nice fish here. It's my boy. It's my boy. Oh, gee. They're fat out here. Yep. Good. My man Grunson. Alright, this is the last one of these I'll keep. We're good on grunts. Oh no, no. <laughs> so, all right, so we might lose him on the swing. So here's politics at its best. This is a Gulf flounder. Can't keep him. You probably won't find a Southern flounder for 15 miles near where I'm fishing today. So and that would have been a nice one to have right there. because he's got three oscillated spots on him. That's definitely a gulf flounder. That was definitely a shark when he swam under us. So you saw him really yeah, well? Yeah, okay. it was 100%. Okay. My eyes want it to be a mahi. Yeah, it's not a mahi. It's a nice fish here. This is the rudder fish. Prefer these to the amberjacks. Nice, short, sweet, quick fight. Uh, your shad? Yeah. They're just dropping. Get some life out there. here. Public enemy number one got got. Yeah, that's too bad. It's not bad. What am I keep? I've got that one grunt. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah I'm going to keep putting sea bass with two in the freezer, honestly. They freeze really well. He's, he's a keeper. Put him on there. Just, he should be a keeper. Sometimes deceiving, you know. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Alright guys, headed in now. So we have to leave the AJ spot. 
Um, kind of different plan overall from last week. Brought the tackle that I should have had, the lighter tackle for those, you know, medium-sized kings for what we did, but AJs are fun too. I learned at least these rods can handle it. Um, let me just show you. Jig those pen slammers. On uh, each pen slammer I've got, uh, this one's got 20 pound suffix 832 advanced. It's a good, uh, pretty strong braided line in my opinion. That heavier rod over there has got 40 pound suffix on that heavier jigging world rod. And we had a little bit of other stuff, like one Spanish mackerel, one false albacore, but it seemed like uh, definitely AJs were ruling a lot of that turf today. And the other, when I was jigging towards the end here was a uh, one ounce back and all shad with a split tail on uh, same thing, another with jigging world custom. Appreciate everyone for watching. Uh, check the video's description for links to everything used. Thanks for Eric taking me out. It's a beautiful afternoon now to head home and uh, plenty of fish in the, the cooler. If you're looking for real estate in the area, uh, check out uh, Eric's channel, I'll put his Facebook page, and etc. So he does uh, land, real, land real estate and he does, um, you know, homes, stuff like that. And uh, this video is sponsored by uh, Waterland Co. Sunglasses. Make a great pair of polarized lenses for long days out in the water, looking down at the water all day make a big difference so uh, there's a discount code in the video's description to grab yourself a pair glass lenses are awesome so appreciate them sponsoring today's video all right great day lots lots learned lots of mistakes big problem was missed a bunch of toothy critters on the lighter on the heavy tackle then you go to the lighter tackle which you're probably thinking spanish mackerel and then you hook the aj's on that and they just don't win all right well learn something so appreciate everyone for watching i'll catch up with you in the next video